Hey bitches, so I'm not in my normal setup right now. I'm literally using a desk lamp with like a little, it has like a ring light in it that has a speaker in it. It's not my normal lighting, but I wanted to come and tell you guys a story real quick as I'm sitting here having a cider type drink, whatever you want to fucking call it. And this is about when I got arrested again. And if you've been on my channel for a while, then you know that I have a video called Arrested for Prostitution, which is a crazy one. I'm going to link that one down below, but this one does not fall short of the crazy meter at all. It actually has something to do, well, it doesn't have something to do, but it correlates with some stuff that's going on right now on YouTube and how there's all these trolls and crazy people because trolling you guys is a fucking real thing. But this wasn't like I met a troll and then they just like fucked with my life and all that kind of stuff. This is someone that I was actually friends with. And if you guys know, back in the day there was a website called stickum.com and you could basically go on there and just have a video chat and then you get people on the side and people could be in the chat i was very popular on there because i was doing that back in my modeling days and all that kind of stuff so i was very popular and i made the mistake of meeting a few people from there um the first one is actually the one in my arrest for prostitution video um that was one of the ladies and the second lady lived in canada and so sorry that is a air freshener above me right now i became friends with this woman in canada i'm not going to say her name for legal reason she she, her and I became good friends. I was friends with her daughter. We were friends for a good long while. I want to say probably like four years, maybe three years before we met actually. And I used to just love taking trips. I wanted to just go somewhere and experience something new. So I went to Canada. I had been to Canada before, but not the part that I was going to. We became very good friends. I went there a lot. I've had my ex-boyfriends go there. I spent a lot of time there. We spent like months at a time there and we would just hang out and have a good time. Like, you know, smoke a little pot, all that kind of stuff where it's legal in Canada. Thank you very much. It started to go sour. The last trip that I took there, I can't even what year it was and I'm actually not going to say the year because I, if she's watching this I've seen that she sent like tweets to Perez Hilton trying to figure out how I'm doing after like the pulse attack and all that kind of stuff I don't want the woman in my life but I figured this is a story I share my whole life with you guys I'm gonna share this with you because it's really fucking crazy I come back to Florida I end up getting married and I was living my life I was having fun I was still talking to her um, we just weren't like on the same level. I started to get annoyed by her because she kept complaining about money issues. And I want to say this first and foremost, this is someone that, um, I had witnessed personally. I had witnessed her fall in businesses to try to get money. She was always in a lawsuit with someone trying to get money from a job and all that kind of stuff. So it was very sketchy. That should be red flag number fucking one. Apparently <laughs> not for me. I come back to Florida. She never asked me for money. She never asked me for money, but I did give it to her one time and she paid me back. It was like $500 I gave her just so she could help a bill. And then she gave it back to me. So I thought she was honest. I mean, come on. She was letting me stay there and we were having a good time and all that kind of stuff. Stupid me. She starts like doing the woe is me thing, woe is me, all this kind of fucking bullshit. And all of a sudden she asks me and my husband for money. Um, she reached out to my husband and asked him for money. He told her no. I told her that was out of line. She should not do that. And basically we're not going to give her any money. Well... That's when it's she became extremely fucking vindictive. So fucking vindictive. She was telling people I had AIDS. At that time, it was around when I developed a skin condition called Pleva. You guys can look it up. I'm going to do a video on it. And basically was telling people I had AIDS because one of the symptoms of this Pleva thing was fucking AIDS. I mean, it's a fucking symptom of everything. You could fucking cough, you have cancer. She started spreading that around with the picture that I sent her because I was like, oh my God, what is this? Because she had like some medical training and she didn't know. And I eventually found out it was the Pleva. So I told her no. It's She started like going crazy. She kept calling me, texting me, all this kind of shit. And I just cut off all fucking ties. Well, lo and fucking behold, here comes the fucking trolling, you guys. I, let's fast forward to probably two years later, almost two years later from this. I go on a family vacation with my dad every um, few years as a family reunion, and that's upstate New York, and then we cross and we go into Canada. <laughs> when I tell you the look of fucking shock on my face when this fucking happened to me, I was not fucking well at fucking all. I'm crossing to the Canadian border with my dad at Niagara Falls. I'm driving. All of a sudden, the lady like takes my passport and looks at me. She's like, you need to go into the service center right here or whatever they call it at the, um, at the border right there. So I look at my dad. I was like, if this fucking has anything to do with this fucking woman. Oh my God. And fucking lo and behold, it did. She fucking apparently in the Mountie in Canada decided that they were going to put a warrant out for me because she was saying that I was sending pizzas to her house, that I was calling her nonstop, that I was putting things on Craigslist to have people come to her house for her and her daughter, which was not the case at all. She said I called the SPCA on her and had one of her dogs taken away from her and all this fucking bullshit. Like this is nothing like, and I'm gonna get to it in a minute because I'm gonna tell you about the court case. <laughs> like, wait for that, you guys. How did this fucking happen? This town where she was, where my warrant was, was like 
four fucking hours from Niagara Falls. They're like, you know, it's probably nothing. They're just gonna let it slide. You're just gonna be able to like go on your way then take care of the warrant if you ever want to, if you ever come back to Canada, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's not the fucking case because they fucking drove four hours to come pick my ass up at the fucking border crossing right there and drove me to this small rinky dink fucking town in Canada and put my ass in fucking jail. I was put into the tiniest little jail that I've ever seen. It was like a one room schoolhouse in there. And I'm freaking out the whole time. Like, um, I'm four hours away from where my dad is. This is Canada. And in Canada, by the way, you guys are not allowed to call America from prison to get anything taken care of. So I'm thinking like, fuck, I'm literally here in Canadian jail and going to have to deal with this. You guys. My dad luckily had my credit card with him and was able to follow and they told him, oh, he's gonna be um, transported to the courthouse tomorrow and you have to go there and basically um, see what his bail is gonna be set at, what are the requirements are, and then you can get him out and take him home. I'm freaking out. Mind you, I had just freshly bleached my hair and got my eyelashes tinted. That does not go over well in jail, just so you guys know that. You will, like, first of all, I would have found, like, the biggest, like, thug in there or something and became their bitch. Like, no one's gonna fuck with my Snickers at the end of the day. I would have been protected. Thank you very much. First and foremost, I get taken to the fucking courthouse, which there's a huge lock room with had different cells, and they put, like, 20 people into a cell, and I'm freaking out because I, I'm like, these people, like, they have tattoos in their face. They look like they were murderers and all this kind of stuff, which, by the way... I found out that one person that was in the jail actually has supervised like leave on the weekends and he actually stabbed someone's face in and tried to kill them. So that's crazy in Canada. I don't know what that's about. So I'm in there. I finally get my chance to go see um, the judge and all that. And they're like, okay, it's going to be a thousand dollars Canadian. And then you're going to go, here's your court date. You're going to come back. By the time they fucking saw me, I had to... I right, like just go have my dad, have my dad literally just get the money out right now. I don't care if it's fucking another thousand dollars. Get the money out, get me out of jail right now. They're like, well, the banks are closed until the morning. So you're actually gonna have to go and you're gonna have to stay in the fucking prison. In the fucking prison. You guys. <laughs> I was shackled. I shit you not. At that point, I had a breakdown. I was like, oh my God, no. I need to be in protective custody. You have to put me in protective custody. Like extra protective custody. I'm coming up with all these things. And they fucking, first of all, you guys, people in jails, like I appreciate them, like the people that work there because they will fuck with you. So they're like, yeah, there's extra protective custody. You can get extra protective custody. And I was like, oh my God, please, thank God, whatever. They shackle me like hands like this, feet together. And then they put this thing around my waist and shackle it all like this. And I have to like walk like dee, 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 across the fucking thing like a fucking hermit crab. And they put me in the back of this metal ass bus with everyone in the front. Everyone's banging, trying to fucking get like information of like what I did and all this. Cause it was like a little like young white kid in the back of this fucking bus. Like what, what did you do? Did you, are you like the leader of a drug cartel? I get to the prison, they literally book me into this thing. I have to do the whole bend and cough thing, pull my ass apart, all that kind of stuff. I was like, don't threaten me with a good time, first of all. But I did that, got into my little jumpsuit. They put me into protective custody and I shit you guys not, you wanna know what protective custody is? In Canada, I don't know about, in America, this is what it is. It's the child molesters and fucking rapists and some murderers. I have to literally walk up the fucking stairs. It's this massive room and in the middle is like, um a staircase or whatever and I of course <laughs> of fucking course this is like great like I have to walk at like 12 o'clock at night so everyone's awake like looking at me like they all woke up because they heard their ah! for me to fucking come in I fucking have to walk up the stairs all the way I had to turn right and go all the way to the end and my room is on the fucking last or cell whatever is on the last one on the top freaking out it was like this like white guy in there who had just been busted, you guys, for making the fucking jail hooch. It smelled like a fucking ripe ass dump in there. First of all, I would have tried the hooch, I'm not even gonna lie, but I was like, oh my God. And he had two mattresses because I guess the person that was above him got let out or something or was moved. And so he had both the mattresses and I was like, you can have them. You can keep those. I don't even want the mattress. You can fucking have the mattress. I will do whatever you say. Please, God, don't fucking kill me. Like, I'm freaking out. Everyone is banging on their fucking door. Hey, what do you do? What do you do? Blah, 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 what do you do? And he's like, you have to go to the door and tell them what you did. They want to know, air freshener, what you did. And they, so they can feel you out and all that kind of shit. So I'm thinking like, oh my God, they're going to get out of their cells. They're going to fucking kill me. Because I said, I wanted to be like, my name's Nick and I'm a murderer or something like that to fucking scare them so they wouldn't, but I don't think I would scare them in fucking prison. Oh my God, <laughs> stories put me through. Basically, I say I'm Nick and I fucking did nothing. <laughs> Stupidest fucking answer ever to fucking tell these people in prison, right? 
Because they were probably all like, oh yeah, we did nothing too. We're in jail, huh? I somehow fall asleep. I think the stress just put me to sleep because in that kind of situation, I don't know how <laughs> else I would have fallen asleep if it wasn't for fucking stress. Thank God morning comes. Morning fucking comes and I get taken back to the courthouse like bright and fucking early. Thank God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But, but, I'm now shackled because I was set to be released. A guy, um, an older guy was set to be released and a younger guy was set to be released. So we're all shackled together. Same way that I got there, like a hermit crab, all shackled together, put up in this bus thing. And there's no seatbelts. Do you think there's fucking seatbelts? There's fucking not. So if that thing flips, you're fucked. So you might as well just like tuck and roll. I get put into like the holding cell with these guys. And the older guy lets us know, fucking lets us know that he has prostate cancer. And then takes a shit. He took a fucking massive shit and it's like, like all fucking over. Like, come on, dude. Like, I get it. I fucking get it. First of all, I was courteous enough. I asked him if I could use my own private little area to take a shit. And that, I guess I was holding it for a few days because I felt like a fucking football coming out of my ass. So I'm just gonna fucking say that. But I finally get fucking released. But do you think I'm released to my father? No, 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 no. They have to drive me in a fucking minivan. Are you fucking ready for this? <laughs> this is fucking killer. Like this is like, this is for TV, seriously. They fucking have to drive me in a minivan from the courthouse all the way back to fucking Niagara Falls, where then I will be escorted back into America as if I murdered someone. I'm in the minivan, and guess what happens after being in for five minutes? Guess what fucking happens? The fucking horn on the minivan, and I'm shackled like this, mind you, so everyone can see that I'm fucking shackled, and the fucking horn busts on it. It, the whole time, they're and mind you, it's an old-ass minivan, so they have to drive really fucking slow. Four hours later, I finally get to Niagara Falls. I pull up to the fucking facility, the border control, and the horn is still fucking going. So everyone inside is turning and looking. Everyone outside is turning and looking. And I'm just like, get me the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> I fucking can't. That fucking horn. And the guys in the front were like nice though, like cool. They were like laughing about it. We were joking around, all that kind of fucking shit. I then get escorted. My dad comes to the, the place. They let me in his car, thank God. And I told him, get the fuck out of this country. Just go the fuck out of this country. I'm never going back to Canada, just so everyone fucking knows. I never want to go back to Canada. Um, but at that time, I didn't know that I would have to go back to Canada. <laughs> I fucking did. So fast forward from that, I'm in Florida, whatever. I get my attorney, I'm in New York, I get my attorney, I get a fucking court date. This fucking attorney was whack as fuck, you guys. I get a fucking attorney and he's like, I'm gonna take care for you, blah, 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 blah. Guess what, he didn't, he fucking didn't. Fucking did not. I then have to go back to Canada. I bring a friend with me because I'm like, I don't know what's gonna fucking happen. I don't know if these people are gonna put me in jail or anything of that fucking nature. They tried to. We used to drive from Toronto all the way to this fucking town and go to fucking court in this thing. My attorney looks like he had been drinking the night before. It was like, it was a fucking nightmare. My friend's like, really? While this is happening, when you have to go up in the courthouse to like sit to be where you're fucking trying to go, the woman who said all this about me is allowed within 30 feet of me. And not even like she would be like so scared, which mind you, she told the fucking judge and the attorneys that her daughter who was older than me was fucking scared of her life of me and could not attend the court thing, but wrote a letter. She wrote a fucking letter, you guys. Then decided not to read the letter. I was gonna fucking die with the letter. My friend and I are in the courtroom like, like really bitch, you're fucking trying to pull this. Because we're in the fucking waiting area with this woman, she kept moving closer to me. She was seriously fucking obsessed with me or something. I don't fucking know because she kept moving closer to me, fixing her fucking hair all fucking over, trying to get me to notice her. And I'm like, okay, can you fucking get her out of here? Because this is fucking bullshit. Like what the fuck is going on? I then have my court moment. They're like, they're like, well, we're actually thinking about putting him and giving him prison time because I looked this up in America and all the things that she's saying that he did with no fucking proof, you guys. No fucking proof. My attorney even said there was no proof. This woman even contacted my father and fucking told him that I have AIDS and all this kind of fucking shit, but she's fucking scot-free. She's fucking scot-free. She said she just wanted a thousand dollars. And then it would all go away and all that fucking bullshit. But the judge wanted to fucking throw the book at me and make an example because I'm from America and all this fucking bullshit. Her words, not mine. My attorney is like, no, we're gonna have to push this back. We have to push this back. He's not going to jail today. So finally it gets fucking pushed back again. Mind you, I have to do fucking anger management. I have to do all these fucking courses and things while this woman's sitting there laughing. Who, remember, remember I told you this, her daughter is afraid of me. 
Her daughter is scared of me. Older than me, scared life was of me. Could not come to court and all that fucking shit. We're leaving the courthouse, my friend Kim and I. I'm like looking out the window. I'm on the phone. I can't remember who I'm on the phone with. I might have been my mom. And I'm like, hmm. And mind you, I'm blind. <laughs> but I can still see this because these were like very, like, they were big women. I'm sitting there looking like, hmm. I tell my friend Kim to get her camera out and hold her phone like this or something. And goddamn, <laughs> she didn't click the right button to fucking record it. But we walk out of the courthouse and this bitch in her minivan starts to pull out and drive very slowly towards me. I look at the car, her fucking daughter, who is scared to fucking death of me, is in the fucking passenger seat, fucking recording me on her fucking phone, laughing and pointing at the fucking phone. Oh, you're so fucking scared. You're so fucking scared of me, but you can do that. No, you guys are money hungry fucking cunts. That's what you fucking are. And honestly, after that, I called my attorney. I said, this is what they're fucking doing. You need to get this fucking thrown out right now. He did his fucking best, which was probably fucking nothing because I still had to pay them like a thousand dollars. At that point, I was like, fucking take it. You can have more if you fucking want it. Just get the fuck out of my life. That has been cleared up. That is when I was arrested again and for the reason I probably will never go back to Canada even though I love Canada. Um, that's that story you guys. Let me know your thoughts down below and that's why this whole trolling thing, you can get in a lot of fucking trouble even though I did fucking nothing. <laughs> like literally did nothing. Like I'm sending pizzas to your house. Is that like what? What? You know what's funny is the Mountie Constable or whatever, Constable, whatever you want to call it, said that they tried to get in contact with me and I didn't pick up their phone, so that's why they put a warrant out for me. I never got a call from them. I never got an email. I never got a text because I would have taken that seriously. And I hope you guys enjoyed this fucking story. This has been a long time coming. Whew. That. So anyways, all my social media is down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Thumbs this video up. Share it if you want to. And I love you guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.